Praise the Lord, you rich pastor for Solomon. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, you are the Lord of lords, the great I am. The God that's strong and mighty and mighty and bad. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. We are more than conquerors because you love us, you care for us, and you fight the battles, seen and unseen. All we have to do is obey you and trust you and your providential care and instruction and wisdom. And so we abide in your will and purpose because it's victory in you. And Jesus' name. Are y'all tired of principality and power messing with you? Give it to God. Yes, raging war. See, when you're ready for the battle and ready to win, then you become obedient to the will of God so that he can move freely and do what he could have always done from the beginning. The Bible says even Jesus Christ learned obedience through his suffering. The beauty of who God is. Yes. Raging war over the enemy. You can only rage war over the enemy when you know who the enemy is. Why the Bible says it's not flesh and blood. It's spirit. Not flesh and blood, but spirit. Principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and rulers in high places. Then you can raise war and victory over the great high God. If you would turn with me, please, to the writing of Isaiah. Turn with me, please, to the writing of Isaiah, because I got the victory. <laughs> I have the victory, the victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's something when you have victory, when you know who you serve and you know who your Lord and Savior is. Okay. Let's look at chapter 44 of Isaiah. Chapter 44 of Isaiah. Yes, chapter 44 of Isaiah. Yes, 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 yes. Now, before I get into my message, we're all aware that they're trying to get a new speaker, house speaker. Everybody's trying to get another house speaker. Yes, we know. And Nancy Poluski, um, I believe, is no longer in house, and they're trying to get another house speaker to take her place. And they don't have quite enough gifts, uh, voting, they don't have quite enough votes to put who they want in that position. I believe it's a, 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 a male running for office now at this time. Well, I'm here to officially make it known publicly to proclaim that I will be more than accommodating to occupy that position of being the house speaker if they would contact me, 
I believe I can do an excellent job even in that position. We hold that position, but I'm probably not able because I don't know what the qualification is as far as being uh, a certain party. But I certainly could uphold that job in the highest integrity and the spirit of excellence. Before I get into my message, coming from Isaiah chapter 44, I wanted to say the Hebrews 5, 8 says, though he were a son, Jesus Christ, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God and high priest, after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. So this is what was being stated about Jesus Christ, that he learned obedience by the things that he Sometimes suffering is necessary and allowed by God for those to learn obedience. because of the warfare that is raging, it is not of ourself. It is a warfare that's being raged against those who have made a commitment to honor and follow and uphold the word of God through obedience and the spirit of excellence. Now, reading chapter 44 of Isaiah, it talks about God's church and comforted. And it talks about the vanity of idols. And then it ends with God's exhort Israel to trust in his mercy. So the message of this sermon will be trust in God's mercy. Trust in God's uh, mercy. When we think of the word trust, We often think of a commitment, someone that we feel we can depend upon. So trust can often be thought about dependability. When we think of trust, we not only think about someone we can depend upon or dependability, we think about someone we can confide in. So we think about someone who has confidence or confidentiality, someone who could keep confidentiality. Also, when we think of the word trust, not only do we think about dependability and confidentiality, we also think of someone we can count on. So we have the two, dependability and confidentiality is what we really focus heavily on the word trust. And God wants his people to trust in his mercy, to trust in his goodness, to trust and his provisions, to trust in his knowledge, to trust in his understanding. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not towards your own understanding, but at all times acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. You don't have to live in a world where you're concerned about who you can trust or who you cannot trust when you trust in a holy and righteous God. You see, when you're trusting in God, you're trusting God beyond the seen and the unseen. You're trusting God beyond the known and the unknown. You're trusting God in his providential care. 
and his abilities and his characteristics that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. You're trusting God in a sense that your life is literally in the hands of God. He is the author and finisher of your faith. So you're not concerned about what is going on. You're not concerned about who you can depend on or who you can confide in or who you can control who you can trust because your trust is placed in higher than humanity. You see, the trust and God's mercy is to trust far beyond humanity because humanity will never give you the full fruition of the harvest of a trust and a holy and righteous God. So here in this writing that is admonishing the people to trust God, it says, remember, I have formed thee, thou art mine, thou shall not be forgotten of me. He's reminding you that if you're going to trust in God, don't be concerned about humanity. Now, why is God telling you not to be concerned about humanity? Because humanity will change on you. They will make things to be what they're not. They will try to orchestrate what they cannot even control. They will try to allude to things that are not even accurate. That's why Psalm 8 says, what is humanity that thou art mindful of him? and the son of humanity that thou visited him. For thou hast made humanity a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. In other words, don't focus on humanity. Don't relinquish your God-given power over to humanity. Because humanity is not the one who can bless you, who can keep you, who can provide for you, who can protect you, who can endow you with the Holy Spirit, who can give you wisdom, understanding, and godly counsel. They all need God. So don't put your trust in something lower than God. That's why he tells you don't put your trust in colors. God is a spirit. He's not your colors. You see, with politics, you have to vote for positions. And people normally vote for who they like according to their parties. Now, we can't even fill the House of Speaker position. They knew the position would become available, but it's not filled. We don't know who's going to get that position, but God knows. God knows who he will allow to be in that position, whether it be a male or whether it be a female. He knows what party they will be and what gender they will be that will hold that position. We don't know. We can vote. We can determine who we want in that position. But ultimately, God is going to place in that position whoever he wants in that position. It will be interesting to see who gets it and what is done with it. Because apparently that position holds a very high authority because certain, certain actions cannot be done until that position is filled. 
So the longer that position is unoccupied, some of their works are being put on hold. Some of y'all are going to get that. As long as the position is not filled, they're unable to do some of their jobs. But God's work will never be required to stop based on humanity. God's work is going to continue with or without humanity in any position because he's God. So God reminds us to trust in his mercy, his loving kindness that are new every morning, his faithfulness and who he is and what he beholds. The Bible says that he will pour out his spirit upon the seed and bless the offerings, the offspring of thy seed. God is able to bless the offspring of thy seed as he pour out his spirit because his spirit gives an excellent spirit of who he is. And God blesses excellent spirits. He blesses those who are obedient to a holy and righteous God. He blesses those who have learned obedience toward a holy and righteous God. He blesses those who obey. He blesses those who take his godly counsel. He blesses those who are more concerned about him than others. And so in chapter 44 of Isaiah, God says, I am God, I have chosen, I have made thee, I have formed thee, I will help thee. Can you see the correlation, Chip? I have chosen, God does the chosen. I have made thee, God does the creation. I have formed thee, God determines the image. I will help thee, God is your help. So if you're trusting in God's mercy, then you're trusting God to choose for you what he would want you to do, to make and form you and to who he would want you to be and to help you with whatever he has chosen you to do. That is trusting and God's mercy. And when you trust in God's mercy, you are trusting in God's dependability and you're trusting in God's confidentiality. A God that knows everything. So as I watch television today a little bit about filling the position and how that it did not get filled yet and some of the tasks could not be done unless that position is filled, I begin to ask them, who will you put there? Will it be their selection or will it be your selection? Who will you put in that position to show everyone that you're still in control and that there are some things we can't even feel? There are some things we can't even do. The party is divided, so obviously they can't place who they want in that position. And they voted, but they didn't have enough votes to win the position. And clearly God knew that. Would I have loved to have been in that position? If I was working among them and had an opportunity to do an internship with them, 
or be in that position? Yes, I would. Would I be able to work in that position in the highest integrity? Yes, I would. Because my commitment is not to a party. My commitment is to a Lord. My commitment is not to a color. My commitment is to the Lord of all, the Holy Spirit. So yes, I could work in that position and uphold it in the highest integrity because I will be upheld by the most high God. So yes, I could. If God would have wanted me in that position, he would have made that position available. Any position that God wants someone in, he certainly can place them. Without humanity's knowledge or understanding, he's God. So let us wait and see who God allows to be put in that position and the direction that God will navigate their paths and handling the house of speaker position, the speaker of the house position. Because truly we can see that God is the one that chooses, he makes, he forms, and he helps. And he will pour his spirit out upon the seed and he will bless the offspring the most holy God. So let's see what God will do. The most holy one that he said, I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. Let's see what the first and the last will do. I believe this is going to be a very interesting manifestation and revelation of what God can do when those who pray and seek God and he answers their prayers, how he will fill certain positions to get his perfect will accomplished in this earth. He's the first and the last. He's the author and finisher of our faith. So no matter while I'm not involved in politics, because I hold no political office, I've never held a political office, but I do have some political knowledge and background, and I've worked with a lot of different people on various levels of political office. I would like to see what God is going to do in the political arena. He's still God over creation, and he can still be God over the political office. So let's see who God will place in that position a male or woman? And what party will they come from? And what direction will God dictate their services to be fulfilled? That's why the Bible says rulers are not a terror to you because God is the one that allowed rulers to be in certain positions. He is still determining who will be in position. And this is just an opportunity for God to place in that position whom he deemed necessary to reside over that particular position. 
Now, as I bring this to closure, I'm asking everyone just to pray. Ask God to establish his authority and positions that impact the world. That thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And when you ask that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, then what you're asking God is to orchestrate and to put in position those that will follow his will, those that will obey him, those that will uphold his will as he uphold them by the power of his word. A holy and righteous God that we behold. You see, while we're in the world, but not of the world, God still orchestrates a lot of things in the world. He has not lost his godly power by no means. And when he's ready to move and operate on the prayers of the righteous behalf, we will see the manifestation of God working. That's why it's important that people be in those political offices who will honor God no matter who is in these positions, as long as God is Lord over your life, it really won't make a difference because God will still be orchestrating. He'll still be the author and finisher of your life, no matter what is done at the White House. So you don't have to worry you don't have to be concerned or upset. You can just rest in the providential knowledge, care, and choosing of God. Trust in his mercy. Trust in God's loving kindness. How do we trust in God's loving kindness? To trust in God's loving kindness, first of all, we have to yield to a holy and righteous God and acknowledge that he is able to do everything. He's able to do the impossible. And he cannot fail. And once you acknowledge that God is able to do the impossible, and that he cannot fail, then you have to acknowledge God's perfect will, that thy will be done. And after you acknowledge God's perfect will, that thy will be done, then you allow God to do his will. And when you allow God to do his will, you will see the manifestation of what God is doing. There's perfect peace and trusting in the mercy and loving kindness of God. Whatever it will be, you know that God is still in charge. Whatever happens, you know that God still is actively, providentially orchestrating his will among his creation. That's why he says the prayer of the righteous of Elif Moses. Righteous in him, not in self, righteous in trusting in a holy and righteous God. Righteous in trusting in the power and provisions of God. Righteous in trusting in the knowledge and perfect will of God. And when you come to the understanding that he is the most high, then you can rest in his provisions. And to rest in his provisions is to give your life completely unto him. 
It is in him that you live and move and have your very being. You're not concerned about anything that humanity is trying to establish, control, and or orchestrate. You are only accepting what God is doing. His choosing. What he's creating and forming. And the help that he gives to fulfill his perfect will. And the government is no different than any other organization that God is still God over all organizations. He's God over all creation. Even government makes no difference who honors him or not. He's still God. Makes no difference who wants to serve him or not. He's still God. Makes no difference any laws that are made that are in enmity with God. He's still God. He's not changing based on humanity's lawmaking policy. And he doesn't expect those who honor and obey him to change based on humanity's lawmaking abilities. We don't change based on the law of the land. We are to uphold and honor the law from the word of God, which is his mercy and his grace that has been extended toward all that changes not. And so whatever position you hold, you hold it first and foremost in the highest integrity in the excellence of his spirit, which cannot deny who he is and it cannot be an enmity of who he is. It is in the unification of the cohesiveness through the spirit his Holy Spirit. It is interesting how even now we have a position available and God can use this to join together. He can use this to join those together to begin to pray and ask God to select, ask God to help them determine who to select to put in that position. See, we shouldn't be doing anything on our own knowledge and understanding. If God is truly the first and the last, and there's no other God than him, then even filling that position, we should be seeking God. We should want God to be the speaker of the house. And if we want God to be the speaker of the house, we are yielding our self-will to him. Lord, we need you to be the speaker of this house. We have given that position to God and because the position belongs to God, he will place any human representative of him in the position because we have dedicated that position to him. God wants us to see every area that is orchestrating upon creation that it belongs to him. And if it belongs to him, allow him to choose who he would want to represent him in any position. Certainly he knows the future. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He knows what we don't know. He sees what we don't see. 
He can orchestrate what we cannot orchestrate. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. They're not his ways. So as we dedicate that position to God, asking God to choose, to form, to make, and to assist, we have given him our will and yield it to his will so that he can have his perfect will over our life and the world system that we reside in that ultimately belongs to him. That's why we don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. We don't have to be concerned. We just ask God to do the selection to validate and confirm who he wants and we will accept and obey according to his will. Because this is a God that can breathe knowledge and to whomever he decides and they can operate in the highest excellency of spirit that is not humanity, but it's given by God. And so as we desire to operate in the highest excellency of spirit, because we're yielding to a holy and righteous God, we should desire that all positions that ever come available should be filled by God with those who will operate in the excellency of spirit that only God will know. Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and continue to provide our daily provisions as we honor and obey you and depend upon you and accept you as we trust and your knowledge, your will, your understanding, your godly counsel. Either you're going to trust God or you're not going to trust God. Either you're going to allow God to be God or you're not. But either way, he'll give you a peace that passes all understanding when you yield to him. That whoever's in office, you know that God is ultimately in control and always have been. So whoever he decides, pray that God will have his perfect will. Pray for unity. Pray for trust. And God, pray for obedience toward a holy and a righteous God. And pray that God will be glorified even in the selection of this position that ultimately belongs to God. Because government can be established upon the foundation and which God is laid. If we seek God and desire God to do that, if we want God as Lord, he shall be Lord. No matter who holds any humanity position, because God's administration never ends. And it will never need to be filled. It has a permanent fulfillment. The beauty of who God is. I am the Lord that maketh all things. If we believe that he is the Lord that maketh all time, 
things, then we should yield to the Lord that set it all things. He can set in that position whom he desires. So it is my greatest desire that God will sit in that position whom he has chosen, whom he has selected to occupy that position. And all other positions that may ever become available, that God will sit in those positions whom he has selected according to his divine power, godly counsel and wisdom. Why? Because I fully trust in the dependency, sustainability, power, knowledge, and wisdom of a holy and righteous God. I truly love everyone in the love of Christ Jesus and pray that God will manifest himself more than ever before as he restores and establishes the broken areas that the locust has been able and the canker worm that has been able to come in and destroy. God can unify. God can restore. And God can pour out his spirit in a way that many will yield to his desire. There are many that will be praying and asking God to have his will. There are many that are asking for God's help. There are many that are asking for God's selection, his choice, and his perfect will, and it shall be done. Trust in his mercy. Trust in his loving kindness. the God of creation, the most holy one. Fear not, neither be afraid, for there is no God other than our God. He reminds us, be aware of those who form a God or most in a graven image that is profitable for nothing. And to remember your God. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord have done it. Shout ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord have redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thus said the Lord, thy redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Isaiah 44, 23 through 24. He said he did this all by himself. He is the same God that can continue to do this all by himself himself. He said the heavens will rejoice. 
He said, the earth will break forth and sing. The mountains and the forest and the trees thereof. For he is the Lord God, the Redeemer, that he has formed and made all things that stretch forth the heavens alone. What a comforting message from God. That while we're entering into another year, we have the same God. That all we have to do is call upon, depend upon, trust in, rely upon, seek, pray, and allow him to be God. May all see the power of the most high, the knowledge and wisdom of the most high poured out and executed in places that you never imagined as God cohesively bind, orchestrate, and perform his will among his people. For he is holy and righteous far above all that humanity can even think or ask because of our limitations. Let us go to the throne of grace as we close out this message to trust and his mercy, his loving kindness, for he shall never fail you. And we have much to rejoice about. Much to rejoice about. Now, this was a message in Isaiah 44 that talked about God's church being comforted. But it's also a correlation to the world and which we reside in because God is in us so that his people will be comforted as we are working in other positions upon the world that we're in but not of. Just like the church is not contained and mere bricks and mortal that was made by hands. The church was established by God's hands. So the universe and all of its creation that has been made by God shall be upheld, comforted, orchestrated, and established to rule and reign under his wisdom and power by him, the first and the last, the only wise, invisible, immortal, eternal, everlasting God. Let us pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for this message to trust in you, to trust in your dependability, to trust in your substance ability. You can sustain us. To trust in your confidence, your power, your knowledge, and your godly wisdom. We thank you, Father, for your spirit of excellence. We thank you for your spirit of prayer and supplication and intercession. We thank you for your spirit of obedience. We thank you 
for your spirit of praise and worship. We thank you. That the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And that the world is your creation. And everything that you have created, you are the head. It all belongs to you. And so, Father, we're petitioning you to be the head over what needs your hedge so that you can orchestrate and make known your perfect will. We thank you in advance for the miracle working power that you behold. We thank you, God, for all that you're going to do. Thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you that your will is being manifested because we're seeking you and not humanity. And so we honor you because we're seeking you, the only true God. As we lay this at your altar, confident that you hear and confident that if we know you hear, we have the petition of the desire that is within heart because our heart is in alignment with your will, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory to the most high. And Jesus' name we pray. Expect great things from God. And you will see the manifestation of his greatness. For he can do what we can't even think to ask. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or even think of. That's why we say, Lord, your will. The most high. You can rejoice and knowing that God has already worked it out. For he knew such would come to pass and how he would bring it all to pass, to fulfill his divine will. Always remember to trust in the Lord's mercy, his loving kindness, his loving kindness, that he has not failed, nor has he forgotten his covenantal promises. He shall be Lord. He shall be God. Over his creation. Amen. 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 What a mighty God to behold and honor. I don't know what my future holds. Because God has not fully manifested, made it known how he's orchestrating my paths of life. But I do know that wherever he orchestrates me, I will allow him to uphold all things in the excellency of his spirit. Because he is Lord of all. And he shall reign eternally. Amen. 
Amen. Amen.